What's this? This is a UFO. It was invented by Japanese astrophysicist Koryo Miura. It was implemented many times before, for example, with the 1996 space shuttle. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are Paper Fact from the School of Science and Technology, Singapore. I am Chua Haran, and my group mates are Joseph Chan, Tosha Fu, and Ki Tekken. So, what is our project? What exactly are we investigating? When we fold a piece of paper, the thickness of that paper will increase. Our aim is to find out the number of combinations to collapse an end by end paper into a 2 by 2 paper. By the number of combinations, I do not mean the number of ways to fold the paper, but instead the number of unique sets of layers on a 2x2 square. Here is a short animation of the folding. After the folding, you can see that in every of the final four squares, there will be a number. This number indicates the number of layers in the respective square itself. Each unique set of layer in each of the squares is counted as one combination. Hi, I'm Joshua, the programmer here at PaperFact. So, right now, I'll be telling you the three methods that we use in order to achieve this aim. Firstly, there was brute force, where we exhausted all possible combinations without any mathematical concepts involved. Eventually, we exhausted all the combinations for folding a piece of paper and recorded them down in the table. Our next method will be algorithmic programming. Based on the methods and findings from the brute force method, we generalize the pattern and use coding to identify combinations for folding large sheets of papers, for instance, a 6x6 or a 12x12, which was much harder to get combinations for. Our last and final method will be matrices. Due to its close similarity to actual folding, we investigated how we could apply matrix multiplication to help obtain more reliable results. Hi, I'm Tegan, one of the two researchers from PaperFact. So, from all of our thorough investigations, what are our findings? These are combinations for 3x3 three three squares to 7x7 seven seven squares folding into a smaller 2x2 two two square. So, what exactly is a combination? Well, a combination is a specific set of numbers that represent the layers on the square paper when it is reduced from the bigger square. This is an example of one of the combinations for folding a 5x5 five five square to a 2x2 two two square. While looking at the unique combinations, we found a pattern and developed a theoretical way to calculate the combination using the box method. We also found out that the numbers used on each side of the box method added up to the dimension number of the paper, which we call a set. For example, in a 5x5 five five square, there is the set of 1 and 4, and another set of 2 and 3. Using the different sets, we are able to hypothesize the combinations that could be folded, which we could later prove to be true by using brute force and folding the actual paper. In order to consider only unique combinations, we will have to remove the repeated combinations that could be formed through flipping the square around. For this explanation, we let the set 1 and 4 be A, the set 2 and 3 be B, and having a set of A on the vertical side and the horizontal side creates the combination of A, A. This can be seen in the previous slide, where there is a combination of A, 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 B, and B, B. However, the combination of BA is considered repeated, as it can be formed by flipping the combination AB around. Now, on to the specifics of the code. This code was written in Python 3 and was mainly written by Joshua Fu with some input from Khan on Kit. Firstly, the code accepts two inputs, N and M, which are the values which are the starting origami square N by N and the desired ending square and M by M. For instance, if I wanted to fold a 5x5 five five origami square into a 3x3, three three, I would enter a 5, then a 3 into the program. The program will then print out the total fold cases, which are the total possible thickness of the origami paper at one given side, which has been calculated by an iteration loop. The imaginary cases, which will be talked about later, have been removed from the fold cases. Afterwards, the program will ask you whether you would like to print out the total number of possible combinations as well as the imaginary cases, which will be talked about later. If Y is returned when asked and no return for the second, the program will print out 
a series of arrays to stimulate the final n by m square. For instance, in this case where m equals to 3, a single fold combination will be 3 arrays with 3 elements each, where every array is printed on a new line with an extra line separating cases like this. So that'll be all for the coding component. Hi, my name is Joseph Chai, and I am the other researcher of Paper Facts. One of our unique findings came when we were looking at the unique combinations from the brute force. We realized how similar these unique combinations look in comparison to matrices. So this led us to think, if we are able to simulate folding in, in real life, are we able to simulate folding in terms of matrices? So the next section of our project is about how we have simulated folding in terms of matrices. So to go about doing this, we had to first start off simple. We started off with a 3x3 three three matrix. And to simulate a single layered paper, we assigned one to all the squares in the matrix, simulating which is basically the all one matrix. Then we multiplied the all ones matrix to a matrix containing alphabets, which we then defined as the subject matrix. When we do so, we get a formulated matrix. Looking at the matrix formula, we observe that when we multiply an all ones matrix to another matrix, the numbers along the columns of the resultant matrix add up to the same number. Hence, when we substitute the alphabets with values 1 and 2, the resultant matrix seemed to show a paper folding horizontally, as the layer on the right has folded onto the center layer. So this is how we fold a paper horizontally, in terms of a matrix. So if we are able to fold it horizontally, are we able to fold it vertically? So if you look back at the first matrix formula, when we tried to uh, manipulate the numbers in the subject matrix, we found that it does not affect the way that it is being folded. It always still folds horizontally. So now we went into a different approach. Instead of trying to change the numbers in the subject matrix, we decided to change the formula itself. So what we did is that we swapped the positions of the subject matrix and the all one matrix. So that now the subject matrix is on the left and the all ones matrix is on the right. We didn't actually change any numbers at all, but if you take a look at the resultant matrix, you will realize it's, it looks different. So now, if you compare the first resultant matrix, which is on my right, and if you compare the other new matrix, which is now on my left, you will realize that these two matrices actually look different. One simulates horizontal folding, while the other simulates vertical folding. So. Now that we have established how to do the vertical folding, we decided to manipulate the numbers. Now we substituted the numbers with numbers 1 and 2 to form a diagonal matrix. As you see, the resultant matrix seemed to fold a paper vertically, as the layers on the bottom have folded to the center layer. Hence, we are able to simulate both a vertical fold and a ver horizontal fold on a matrix. So now, when we put them together, we realized that we are actually able to get the final resultant unique combinations just by combining these two formulas together. How we do it is, we put the first subject matrix which is to simulate folding vertically. Then we times it to the all ones matrix. And finally, on the most right, we times this matrix to another subject matrix which is to simulate the horizontal folding. As you see, the resultant matrix form actually looks very similar to one of the unique combinations of a 3x3 three three to a 2x2 two two matrix. So we are actually able to combine all this into one formula just to fold, so that we are able to fold it in one step. Other than this, we, another important aspect of matrices that we found was the determinant of the matrix. We realized that the determinant of all our unique combinations all added up to zero. But why is that so? When we looked back at the first matrix we started off with, which was the all ones matrix, we realized that the determinant of the all ones matrix always added up to zero. And no matter how we multiplied this all ones matrix, the determinant of the resultant matrix would still be zero. Hence, using this, we use the determinant to determine the validity of any given matrix. So we applied it to any further to the further brute force methods that we have, 
since we were coding more complicated things, we decided to use this determinant equals zero to determine whether a matrix that we counted was valid or not. If it's zero, that means the matrix the, of the, the unique combinations is probably correct. And if it's not equal to zero, it is probably wrong. We now move on to part two of our investigations. Initially, we investigated our fold from an m by n to a 2 by 2. Now, we are expanding our research into a folding an m by n into an m by n, where m is a smaller integer than n. We moved on to folding an m by n to a 3 by 3. Using the same concept of sets and combinations, we came up with numerous theoretical folds first before we tried to prove them using the brute force method. However, we found out that after numerous attempts, there were two combinations which are highlighted in yellow that could not be folded using brute force. After folding different dimensions of square paper into a 3 by 3 we found a pattern which caused the combinations in yellow to be proven impossible to fold, or in this case, we are calling it an imaginary combination. We realized that folding a paper in the center requires what is known as a mountain fold and a valley fold. This resulted in the center layer to gain two layers instead of one layer. This will explain why the impossible combinations are impossible to fold. As the center layer always gains two layers when it is folded, it remains the parity of the number, either odd or even. In order to change the parity of the center fold, we, we had to fold both the side and both from the side into the center to result in both the center and the, one of the outer layers to change parity. For example, the left combination, which has a 2 in the middle and a 1 and 3 at the side, cannot be formed as the parity of the middle layer, which has changed from odd to even, is unable to be made, as the outer layer will have to change from odd to even as well. The right combination, on the other hand, has a 2 in the middle and at the side. Thus, it can be folded as both the center and one of the outer layers has changed parity from odd to even. So, there were some basic requisites that our code had to have. It was that the sets had, must have no repetitions when mirrored. So, when coding out, we must make sure that there were no duplicate sets in any order. The sets must also not have an odd, even odd sequence as previously mentioned, such as a 1 2 1 or 1 2 2 2 1, and so on. So, now I'll give you a live demonstration of the code. After you run it, just enter n by n and an n by m number. For example, from a 20 by 20 square origami paper, to a 2x2, two two, we will get all of these four cases, in which afterwards we just want to indicate whether we want to have uh, imaginary cases included, as well as to print out the total number of combinations. So this allows, especially for debugging and just for saying and recording, if you only want to record imaginary cases, record only possible cases, or both. So for instance, in this case where there are zero imaginary cases, because this is even, even as previously explained, if I just put yes, I will get every single possible number of fold that I can get in the certain thickness of the 2x2. Two two. Now, for example, if I want a 20x20 20 20 to a 3x3, three three, I will have 2145 fold cases and this much in imaginary cases. So if I wanted to print everything, including the imaginary combinations, the program will very helpfully just print all the all the three by three codes out, and separate the imaginary cases with a small little header that literally just says imaginary cases. So all of this is basically the output from the code, which we can also export to a file, which the settings are also can be also put here instead of printing them out. So with this code, we are able to get both the total number of combinations possible as well as the configurations of the combinations. Here is a table the total number of combinations possible when folding from an n by m to an m by m squared. For a deeper understanding of mathematical knowledge in this field, there are various other topics that we can research, of which one of them is kirigami. Kirigami is very similar to origami itself, just that it has cuttings on the paper. These cuttings expand out different, ma many other different possibilities of folding, and in which it's very hard for us to brute force this out. After looking at all of our results, how can we apply this to real life? First, it's definitely space shuttles and satellites. Space shuttles and satellites are used often by companies such as NASA. 
they have very limited space. So it will be more efficient for them to fold their materials to have less surface area. This reduces the chance of them colliding into space debris. Next, there's definitely nanobots. Nanobots are robots that are of size 50 nanometer to 100 nanometer and they accomplish a certain task. Folding of nanobots can be more efficient so as to reduce the surface area for it to enter the cell for the bots to function. Reducing the size of nanobots will prevent the working parts from being damaged further when we inject the nanobots into the body. As you can see, the understanding of origami can bring out endless possibilities of mathematics and science. Once again, we are Paperfect, and thank you so much for listening.